GP Insights, a health cert podcast. Practical advice for busy GPs on how to treat with confidence and grow their practice. Okay, well, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, David Wilkinson here again, uh, again, chatting to Paul Elmsley. Paul is the the founder and the CEO of the National Skin Cancer Centres. We're going to chat about a couple of really key points today, um, very much as they relate to the quality of, of clinical care, but, but through non-medical, non-clinical uh, colleagues. The first one is the thing that, of course, um, plagues all of us in so many ways, which is complaints from patients. And so let me throw the question to you, Paul, uh, you know, starting with a, a helicopter view, managing patient complaints um share with us your thoughts on on patient complaints the type of complaints that you've seen and and heard about and and how we how we can structure our thinking perhaps about managing patient complaints well thanks david um look i mean it is obviously something which is prevalent in our industry i would suggest as said is that um i mean patients nowadays are you know, very much more discerning, less probably tolerant, particularly when it comes around to time management uh, and obviously the immediacy of, you know, I suppose them, you know, like everyone's very focused on them and the immediacy of them. Um, And I think that, look, you know, realistically, if we look at it, you know, where do most patient complaints come from? So probably the number one bugbear is the doctor's running late. Um, You know, that's one that obviously... Uh, gets people and and what I'll do is I'll share I suppose that the the complaints that could exist within a practice and let's say the complaints that then occur outside of the practice because I think we're all very aware of the fact the world's digitally connected and what we don't want is patients going out into the community and particularly into their social networks and telling everybody what a horrible place of business or practice you are and turning patients away Um, because ultimately nowadays what we're finding is that when patients are looking for a new home and you know, once again, just relate it to when you're looking at a restaurant or, you know, a hotel you might want to stay in if we're allowed to go and stay in hotels again, is that you know you typically will be looking at Google reviews. You know, that's what you're yep. going to be doing to see whether this place stands up um, to it. So, you yep. know, a lot of practices that we look at have horrible Google reviews. You know, like two stars and everything else. Now, if I was looking at that as a consumer, I'd be going, I don't think I want to go there. I think I'll find <laughs> somewhere that's got four plus if I can, please. Um, the yeah. fact is, is you're never going to please everybody. And typically those that are the ones that are, you know, unhappy or most likely to vocalise it. Um, I mean, statistically, you're going to tell 10 people of a bad experience and only one of a good. I mean, that's just basically how we're wired as people. Um, and probably the media doesn't help um, in that situation. So yeah. if, if you've got a, an issue within a practice, and typically it tends to be always around communication, right? So the fact is we run practices, time management's impossible, the doctor will run late. Right. The, the key thing is, is that, you know, being mindful and respectful of other people's times. If you know the doctor is running late and the patient is still not in the building, it would be quite he- helpful if you would obviously contact the patient to inform them that, you know, you know, Dr. Bob is running late by 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is. You know, yeah. if you would like to delay your arrival, go shopping, do whatever you want to do um, and then come in, you know, well, obviously you'll be then seen. Um, what people dislike is going into a place and, you know, then sitting in the corner and then wondering if they're the next person to be called and have no idea yeah. if they're, they're one yeah. away or five away, right? So yeah. the first thing to do is that with the time management issue is definitely is just communicate with the patient. Even if they're in the waiting room and, and something is obviously has transpired or the doctor is running late, is go up to the patient and tell them, right? If they know what's going on, they're not going to complain. It's only when they're sitting there and, you know, every minute feels like an hour. So typically, it's, it's, that's one of the big ones. The other one is, is typically around, you know, perhaps uh, awareness around cost. Um, some patients right. come thinking it's going to be free or, you know, low cost. And then we do a couple of, you know, particularly I know in our world in skin cancer, you know, there's a biopsy or a treatment or something else that's included. So what we normally would do is that, you know, once again, inform the patient in front now in advance. Now, we don't tell them if they ring up, you know, for the first time what the cost of biopsies and procedures are because, you know, they may never get them to be done. As long as people understand on that visit what that potential cost is to them, um, then patients generally won't be unpleasantly surprised. I mean, if you're a bulk billing clinic, that's sort of irrelevant, but for the most part, most clinics are mixed or private billing. 
So definitely share that with them. I mean, one of the strategies that we've had with our practices is that when it comes to procedures is have the out-of-pocket cost based on time. So that patients, you know, when we say, okay, it's a half an hour procedure and we charge $150 out of pocket, you know, if the patient comes out and we're booking a procedure, we can tell them what their out of pocket is. Now we may not know right. what, what the full cost is because we don't have the histology, but at least we can give them that. Now, yeah. so typically they're the sort of, you know, the major areas. I mean, the other areas obviously is, you know, if the doctor is seen to be inappropriate with a patient or, you know, um, you know, those sorts of things. I mean, look, the way that we try and pick up that information, and there are a few others that call it, you know, instances where the patient will be unhappy with their experience that's occurred within the consulting room or, you know, it's called it behind a closed door versus yeah. let's say what's, what's happening at the front desk. Um, and the way that we've set that up is that we've got a um, 20 minutes after a patient leaves our practice, we send them an SMS. And basically we ask them three questions. And this is what they call net promoter score. And it basically gives you a, a number of a customer or patient satisfaction. And the three yeah. questions are, would you refer um, family or friends to our practice? Why did you give us that score? One thing we could do to improve next time. And yeah. so what, what we do is if, if there are things going on behind the door of a particular doctor's consulting room, that will become very self-evident. And that's not something yeah. possibly the patient would share at the front, you know, front desk as they're checking out, but it's something that they're happy to share with you. Now, if obviously we see a pattern of behavior, now, you know, one-off situations from a doctor that hasn't had a complaint for five years, obviously we can put that down to, you know, a patient, you know, being a little bit strange or maybe just was a, uh, not a good interaction, but we still manage it the same way versus, you know, we constantly are getting complaints about a particular doctor or person that all seems to be centered around this. I mean, if you get those sorts of complaints, you do need to sit down with the pe people in question and make them aware of the fact that we are getting these complaints, they are a concern, and how can we address them? And I think yeah. that the good thing about situations like this is you have the evidence, right? It's not, I have heard, I think about, I'm wondering, here are the three patients that have you know, complained this week about this particular thing, you need to be mindful of it. Now, yeah. patients will also complain about being late and not necessarily at the front counter, but also through this process. Now, what we do as a business is that we get um, the patients when they fill in this information, um, the next morning we get our practice managers to review the results of the day before. And basically the way that Net Promoter School works is that people are effectively in three categories. Nines and tens are what they call promoters. So these are people that are going out and telling their family and friends what an awesome practice you are and you've got to go, you know, you should go there. A seven or an eight is what they call as indifferent. So that means you didn't blow me away and made me really happy, but you didn't disappoint me. And I'm, you know, basically they're not going to promote you or, or say negative things. Yeah. If they score you a six or below, they're what they call a detractor. Now these people will actively go out into the community and tell people not to come and see you, right? Now this is obviously not ideal as a business. So if we have a patient who was to score us a six or below, the practice manager then contacts the patient because we obviously have the patient's contact details and we ring them and we say, hi, Mrs. Jones, I'm really sorry to hear we didn't meet your expectations yesterday, you know, in the, the notes that you provided, which typically are just very short, you know, pieces of text. Um, yeah. You mentioned that blah happened. Would you mind telling me a little bit more about it? And the, the goal really is here is to let them vent, right? Let them let them right. then listen to what they're saying. There'll be emotion attached to it, but inside the emotion will be what actually was the problem. And the way that we typically deal with that is we, we let them vent and then we thank them very much for sharing their experiences. And then we ask them whether it's possible if we could go away and have a chat to the person in question, or it could be a process or a system um, to review it. And then could we come back to them? Now, uh, typically, yeah, yeah. Typically, typically what we do is we'd ring them back, you know, that day. Don't leave it longer than that because we don't want it to, you know, it's a, it's a sore that we don't want to fester. So what we'll do is we'll then um, go and speak to the person in question. Not that we want to have a counter argument to Mrs. Jones. I mean, she's upset and there's no right or wrong in this. And have a chat to the person in question, understand a little bit more maybe what's going on. And I think as a practice manager or an owner, you know, you want to understand what's going on in this situation. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, situations range from very serious through to, you know, call it a mild complaint. But anything that where someone's unhappy and potentially is going to go and tell everybody and write bad Google reviews, we want to jump on it straight away. 
So yeah. we'd, we'd ring Mrs. Jones back. We would thank her very much. We've now gone and spoken to the, the person or people in question. Um, they really appreciate the feedback. Didn't really, you know, understand that that's, you know, uh, what 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 had transpired. You know, apologetic. And you know, whilst we can't, you know, remedy obviously their their experience of the day before, um, you know, we've learnt from it, and we will, you know, take that feedback on board, and that will make us a better right. practice. Now, yeah. most people will shift from being a detractor into a promoter if you let them vent, and then basically take their feedback on board and tell them how you're going to use that feedback, right? People yeah. like to be heard and like to think that their opinions matter and are valued. So, you know, Mrs. Jones now goes from, I really don't like that practice to, oh, well, they've listened to what I've had to say and they've, you know, taken some action or are gonna take some action. And there's the potential to turn them around. What we do also is if we have something that say that's relatively serious, you know, where we have as a practice really have let them down, whatever that happens to be, we would yeah. probably then organize to send a gift basket to Mrs. Jones to thank her very much for her feedback. Okay. Um, because because we've had situations in the past, I mean, I'll give a, a good example. In our practices, we had a situation where a patient had a procedure done on their elbow and um, yeah. on their arm, and then they wanted to know how to, um, you know, protect obviously the wound while they were showering. And one of the staff members sort of half jokingly said, I oh, just shove a plastic bag over it, right? And then basically the patient left. So the patient's completely confused. Is that really, you know, some instruction? Was that just a joke? Yeah. And we're quite distressed by it. Now, what it led us to realize is that our patient information sheet, which we gave them post-procedure, didn't talk about how to look after a wound in the shower, you know, in obviously, you know, body side areas that are obviously a little bit more complex to manage. And we realized that was a deficiency. So, you know, that, that feedback we got led us to change what our form was, which then served all of our patients. And, it also it's a reflective of how many patients before that also got the same experience and walked away, you know, confused as such as well. So, you know, in that situation, we sent the patient a gift basket and thanked her profusely. And I'm sure she was, you know, went from someone who was very upset with us to, you know, very happy that she spoke up and got um, got that feedback. Um, right. Yeah, in our practices, we we publish those um, those feedback results on a weekly basis. Um, basically, it comes out in an Excel spreadsheet. And we do de-identify it. So if it is clearly, you know, Dr. X or staff member Y, um, we'll take the name out because obviously that's, you know, not something we want to publicly shame people. Um, yeah. But the other, the other thing that's really good about this particular process, David, is that you also get to see the positive feedback, which most of us right. never get to hear within the practice, right? We don't yeah. get to hear yeah. of the happy patient and how grateful they are for the doctors and the staff. And, you know, I think for our teams to hear... You know, and, and I'll be honest in saying, you know, out of, I think we get like probably 300 plus a week, you know, patients who actually actively give us feedback. So about 25 to 30% will, will actually physically fill in the form uh, or fill in the right. information. And it's just done as an SMS to their phone. It takes them, you know, less than a minute or two to do it. Um, is that what we find is that, um, you know, sharing that information is, you know, it, enhances the practice greatly and also makes us aware of things that clearly are annoying the patients and just sort of makes us double down and refocus on how you do it. And with MPS, it gives you a score. So it gives you a number out of 100. So we actually have sort of gamified it. So, you know, if we're sitting at 80, can we get to 85 and can we get to 90? Right, right. Um, and, um, but look, I, I think overall, the, the whole idea with patient complaints is to address them immediately. If you've got a patient who's at the front desk, who's clearly angry, distraught, otherwise, um, as the practice manager would be to, you know, take them into a, a room off to the side, let them vent, hear what they have to say. Um, yeah. And I think that generally overall, as I said, is that a lot of people don't want to hear complaints or pretend they don't happen. I mean, that's exactly the wrong way to be approaching it. It's to take it face on, talk to the person in question, de-escalate it, learn from it, communicate with them, um, because somewhere in amongst all of that is some learning for all of us. So that, that's that's fantastic. I'm conscious of, of, of your time today, Paul. I know you've got a hard stop. We've got a couple of minutes left. Let, let me just um, probe a couple of things there. I mean, l listening to all of this, it seems to me the organizing principle here is communication. Right, no, so often the case with everything, but you know, prevention uh, as always, and 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 as doctors, we know this: prevention is better than cure. So, doing everything we can to to, pre to prevent complaints happening, 
I mean, your, your comments around doctors running late and so on. I mean, it seems to me that particularly in skin cancer, we really have very little excuse to run late. And, yeah. and I think there's a professional obligation. I'll say this as a GP, as a professional obligation here to be on time. Um, but I agree with you completely that if, if there is a problem, and of course problems occur, and of course patients understand that, you have to communicate with people. And I love the idea of actually, if the patient hasn't arrived at the clinic, give them a ring and tell them, you know, the doctor's running, running a little bit late, or if they're in the waiting room, you know, tell them, tell them what's going on and give them a cup of tea. Um, yeah. You, you know, yeah. absolutely vital. Let, um, your, 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 your point about, um, about surveys, I think is a really good one. We all get surveyed about everything, right? You buy, mm -hmm. buy a yeah. car, buy a plane ticket, buy, you know, next, you get a yeah. bloody survey. The key thing, I think, for what you're saying is your surveys are really short. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's three questions. It's give us a score out of 10 and write three bits of text. And I think that yeah. the, good, the good thing about it is, you know, you know, score one to 10, they give us a number. If it's, you know, not 10, then there's a reason why they haven't given it as a 10, right? So, so the last question of what one thing could we do, what one thing could we do to get a better score yeah. next time? And that's the question. Leads yeah. us to then creating the list of the things that we need to focus on as a yeah. practice. So, yeah. you know, if we, and look, I said, Neil, you'll see common themes, you know, if 60% if of patients are saying X, well, we need to listen to them. Um, yeah. And I think that, that, look, you know, the problem is without information, you can't make logical decisions, right? And ultimately, yeah. if we're trying to run the most, you know, efficient practice that, you know, is a great place to work and our patients love to come into, you know, without mm -hmm. listening to our patients, I mean, they are, you know, not the, you know, they are the bread and butter of obviously our, 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 our practice sure. and our business. And I sure. think that for most part, none of this stuff is difficult. I mean, for example, we've set up ours through HotDoc, which is, you know, the system that we yeah. use. It's, it's automated. There's no one needs to do anything. It's just automatically done. The data is then sent to a central place. We pick it all up um, and it's put into an Excel spreadsheet, right? So it's all automated. Yeah. There's, no, there's no human But it's deliberate there. and active, Paul, right? It, it's deliberate and active. Yeah, and then the other yeah. part is for someone to keep an eye on it. So we don't want to find yeah. out a week later we've got an angry patient. You know, we want to jump on that immediately. So as I said, it's, it's set up so that the first task in the morning for the practice manager is have a quick scan of the, and all they're looking to do is the six and below, right? We don't, yeah. we don't have to worry about the rest. It's just anyone scored as below a six, or well, they're the first two or three phone calls I'm going to make today. Um, yeah. And, you know, and be good at obviously listening, right? Don't yeah. tell them they're yeah. wrong. People don't believe that. You just need yeah. to listen to what they have to say, let them vent, apologise for the situation and, and what you yeah. can do to help remedy it in the future. Fantastic. You make it sound that easy. It's not easy, no. but it is, it is all doable. Paul, um, yeah. thanks so much and we'll, we'll pick up on the next one. Excellent. Look forward to it. Thanks so much for everyone for the time. Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, please subscribe so you can get updates whenever we post more. And please share it with others. And for more info, please go to helpsert.com.